All right, what's up, everybody? Clint Esposito here with the Clint Esposito Show. We're going to talk to a fellow two wheel enthusiast, also a fellow comedian, actually, a much better comedian. Uh, Jared Harris, give it up. Man, Everyone is at home very, clapping. Oh, it's very subjective. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know how it is after every show, like somebody will come up and be like, oh my God, you were so funny. And then they'll be like, uh, they'll look at the other person and be like, oh my God, um, keep, yeah. keep going. Keep yeah. <laughs> you were going good too. You <laughs> How about when your friends first find out that you're going to do comedy <laughs> and then they're all just like, I'll tell you if you're good. <laughs> like everybody's well, like, he heard a joke, always, so they're an expert. <laughs> they want to see. They, it's, it's funny because they always kind of secretively want to see you fail. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that a secret or is <laughs> definitely a secret? Because like I figured that out after I started comedy back in fucking like I don't know two thousand. I think it was two thousand. Um, yeah, I, I would have like people that I never really talked to that much. They would want to come out, and I'd be like, man. I think y'all just want to fucking see me fail. <laughs> yeah. And then they get mad when you tell good jokes. They're like, damn. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, dude, this is part of it. Like, it's just human nature, I think. Like, everybody, um, I think the cool thing about comedy and comics is, like, um, we have, um, I mean, we all have issues, right? Like, there's some something, something going on, right? We all, we're all a little defunct somewhere. It, it, we're, we're either jumping motorcycles or bikes or, you know, well, we're all we're trying to do something. That's what I was going to say. It's the same thing with the, our other side of our lives, which is bikes. There's something wrong yeah. with everybody there as well. I mean, 100%. <laughs> you know, like it's, it's, it's a, just a form of like risk taking. Like, um, so I feel like there's a lot of similarities with like, um, uh, moto mtb like bmx like it's it's there's always like this um i don't i don't know if it's just we weren't loved enough as kids or what like if we were neglected or what but it's like i feel like we all try to like overcompensate somehow whether it be like with stand-up or it be with like i'm gonna jump a fucking you know, whatever, right. <laughs> like I'm about to risk my life on this thing. Yeah. You know, I feel like there's something there. You're so right. I, I realized I'm not good with actually like talking to people or anything. So I've always tried to be good at stuff so that <laughs> You're I didn't. You're perfect for stand-up comedy. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. This is what I figured I would try to, uh, I figured this out re recently that I'm like trying to do things so that I'm like cool and I don't have to actually have a good personality. Dude, <laughs> here's, what I'll, here's what I'll say. Like, uh, I know, would you probably experience this? And first of all, I will just apologize because I work seven days a week. Like, I, I, I've already drank two margaritas, so, you know, it is what it is. But at least you know you're getting the true me, which is you always get the Excellent. true me. Um, however, I feel like, um, you know, I don't know, dude. I feel, I feel like we, yeah, I feel like we're compensating for something. And um, we're never, comics are never, in my opinion, and I'm not saying this is everybody, but I feel like most comics are not, we're not good. Like if you go to a party and you're like, let's say you're with a girlfriend or a wife or whatever, and she's introducing you to other people. And then, and, and it's like, it's always weird because whenever they say, Oh, you know, uh, he's a comedian or whatever. It's like, they expect you to be just like on yeah. like you're fucking, I don't know, Johnny on the spot with jokes and stuff. But I feel like the best comics are usually very reclusive and, and, uh -oh, At least I know I'm famous. Like I don't want to draw attention to myself in public because I'm always like I'm so used to just getting attention in general, like on stage, that you don't want to have any attention. Really, you just kind of want to be 
kind of left alone, or at least I don't know. How do you feel about that? I like to how... talk at people when they're not available to talk back to me. So that way, my opinion <laughs> is the only one that matters. <laughs> Well, that's true. That's every, I mean, that's every, <laughs> I mean, I, I really think so. Cause like we, we really think we're like smarter than everybody. But <laughs> did you not feel that way in school when you're in? No, I was school? terrible in school. Um, there was a point after school, I would say where I felt like my brain was moving too fast for everything else around me. I've yeah. since, I've since smashed that out of it. And smoked it okay. out of it. But at one point, when I was young and my brain was fresh, I was yeah. like, I have too many thoughts all day. I need to slow this down. <laughs> are you, are you, were you one of those kids where you're just like, it's either your legs twitching and while somebody's talking to you or your arms twitching and or something's twitching? Like, that's how I am. If somebody's talking to me, I'm like, something's twitching. I'm like, either my leg, my arm, something. Yeah. I'm, it's like I'm, I'm halfway listening, but I'm also in another fucking place. Right. That was me in school, 100%, because the whole time I was in school, I was thinking about dirt bikes. You know, they're like, that's <laughs> why I didn't too. figure anything out, because I'm just like, I'm going to jump this when I get home, or what, <laughs> you know what I mean? Shovel and jump, or whatever. That's I was going to so do perfect. something. That's so perfect. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah, that was exactly, dude, I'm telling you, I'm th like, in a lot of comics, I feel like they don't. Because, you know, a lot of comics didn't go into, like, riding bikes or moto or whatever. Like, you know, but I feel like it's almost like I like I, I really selfishly want to get other comics I know who don't have any exposure to, like, riding. Uh -huh. I want to get them into riding because I know they'll be addicted to it. Yeah. Well, you know. Yeah, it depends on the type of person that i think there's a lot of comedians i know that were not about to get on mountain bikes <laughs> <laughs> well true i do know a lot of people that would be like i'm never gonna touch that but i feel like we're all addicted to some sort of danger yeah. I don't, you know what I mean? well like, i 100 percent agree with you here because even yeah. when i stopped riding uh when i was thinking about things that were possibilities um, I had gotten hurt at one point and I started announcing shows because I just hired another rider and then I announced the show and then I just started slipping jokes in and they were really just for me because I was kind of bored just talking. So I was like slipping jokes yeah. in and I started to pick out like a, people around the, like not everybody, but a couple of people would get what I was doing because they were like pretty specific, like moto jokes. So the person yeah. had to understand enough to even grasp what was going on. So I caught a couple of people and then I was like, oh, like I could do this. I'm just in the wrong venue right now. Like, this is just the wrong. Yeah. The rest of these people are like, don't expect jokes, you know, and they don't understand dirt bikes enough. So they're just like, what? But I'm like, so if I was in the right venue, I think I could do this. So yeah. after I stopped riding, it was kind of like, what could I do where you have the chance to travel. There's the opportunity you could travel. It's also so much, I didn't ever think of myself this way before, but it's still somewhat of a performance. So you're yeah. still getting that, um, that adrenaline, you know, and it's still like, oh, it's go time and you got to go and do it. So on those yeah. levels, it's very similar. And actually when, and you'll understand this, I've said this to people before, but when I ride and I had a good show or something, on the way home, you're all like, yeah. And that's the same way when you have a good set. It's the exact same feeling afterwards where, you're just, where you're just like, oh, that was awesome. I want to go do it again right now. I told you. Yeah, I know. It is. It's it's very, it's very similar in that way. Um, and I only know, like, aside from you, uh, I only really know one other comic that, I'm friends with their rides. Um, Who's that? Know, they're not like they're not as into riding as we are. Where like I know you've risked your life. I've well, so life. let's bring it back to how we even <laughs> yeah. know each other or anything. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we should. Yeah, because obviously, like we got to get people. Up yeah. yeah. So yeah. Jared is from Georgia, and yep. I actually lived in Georgia for like 13 years. And the guy that, when I moved down uh, 
to Georgia, the person that I lived with was good friends with Jared. And we had like BMX jumps in the backyard and stuff. Yeah. So Jared would come over and ride the BMX jumps and just hang out in the house. And I remember that was like, basically you were only a couple of years into comedy. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Cause I started in 2000, either 2000 or 2001. I so. moved down in 04. Okay, yeah, so I wasn't that long, and which in comedy years is really not that long. So yeah, let's say I started 2001. Um, 2004, yeah, I was very fresh. I was still fresh. Very fresh in comedy. Which And then you kind of disappeared, right? What did you do? You moved to... Yeah, so I moved, let's see, so 2009, I uh, moved to Los Angeles, um, and only because... I honestly like was not going to move to LA, but I did a show um, with Bill Burr and Bill was like, which a lot of comedy people would know, know Bill Burr. Maybe if you're not in comedy, you wouldn't know, but like he was kind of a big deal at that time. And well, it still is a big deal. I, I was going to say, um, he's got a show at the, bigger. the Prudential Center, which is the hockey arena by us. And we looked up tickets. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I mean, not the, going. Let's put it that way. Even the bleacher, the yeah second <laughs> yeah. Uh, story was like I was like, holy shit! <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a bigger deal now for sure. Yeah, so, but yeah, so I like I done a show. I did I did a show for him. I featured for him and like, um, and so yeah, he he was just like man. He was I don't I, I don't know if he stopped drinking altogether now, but like at that point he was still drinking. Which is great because, like, whenever you can drink with another comic or smoke weed yeah. with another comic, like, you're pals. You're you're pretty much like yeah. grandfathered in for life at that point. <laughs> so, so you know, and I drank. Uh, I, I never, I've never been like a big weed smoker, but like, uh, I'll do that edibles. Um, tell me, go to sleep. But I sound like a ninety year old man. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I did a show with him at the Atlanta Punchline, and Atlanta Punchline's like kind of like my my home club you know and they were like super cool to me and they they knew like oh it'd be good for jared to like work with bill you know so they kind of lined all that stuff up and um super grateful for that and yeah so did that and then he was basically just like we just went to the bar <laughs> a few <laughs> nights in a row after every show and like uh, he would just be like he's like oh yeah you know fucking uh, yeah yeah yeah, if I, yeah, if you want to move to LA, like I'll, you know, I'll fucking hook you up with blah 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 and blah blah blah. And I was just like, okay, like, and then and I didn't really have anything, like, I didn't have anything else going. I was like, well, yeah, yeah, I should just do it, you know. So then I moved to LA, and then that, that kind of kick started a whole bunch of other bullshit. But like, um, I say bullshit, some good stuff, some bad stuff, but um, all learning experiences for sure. So yeah, that kind of that happened. But yeah, that's kind of how I got like more, I guess, into the um, uh, deeper realms of comedy. I, I I would say. So did you BMX wise? Did you just ride growing up? Did you race? Were you more of yeah. freestyle? Yeah. So I, yeah, yeah. Well, BMX was kind of like um, it's always kind of like the bastard, you know, stepchild, whatever moto. Like everything, I feel like aspires to be motocross. Like <laughs> motocross is the the pinnacle of. If you even look at like m mountain biking now, like everything literally emulates motocross. Yeah. So, for me, like um, I always wanted to race moto so bad. Now I did race a little bit, but like I didn't have like my my family didn't support it. Um, me and my parents were divorced. Um, since I was like f from like one years old and, uh, I came from a very like abusive home, um, on my dad's side. And then my mom's side was just very like, my mom was just like a drunk, uh, you know, just did a lot of just substance abuse in general. So she, she was never like, I couldn't get her to like support me in anything. Mm. And the only person I really had that kind of would support me was like my grandfather, but my grandfather died like when I was 14. So, I mean, I was trying so hard to get him to like, see, Hey, just give me a chance. Like, you know, right. buy me one motocross bike. 
I'll buy everything. I'll pay for races. I'll do whatever. If you just help me buy the motocross bike. Cause at 14, right. I didn't have any money. So I would try to, and he would just sit on the back porch with me for hours, dude, for hours. And we would just argue back and forth. And, and I would be like, no, but you don't understand. I could, I could do this. I could do this. And he'd be like, oh, one in a million, son, one in a million. Like he just shit, he just shit on my dreams. Yeah. And so I think it's just, you know, common with like, uh, Older that generation <laughs> yeah people. yeah they just they just like they don't see it's like everything just seems like impossible to them i guess i don't know yeah. so he never really got on hey, board Jared, we're talking about people that made it to the first side of the country and then when yeah. they were like there's gold over here they were like fuck it i'm <laughs> staying <laughs> yeah pretty much i mean yeah i mean they were well they were like so my grandparents have been uh they would have been, uh, they grew up like during the Great Depression. Yeah. So they were like canning food. You know, I mean, everything just seemed like impossible to them. Right. So they were the kind of people you'd be like, you know, I had to go to school or whatever. And they'd be like, oh, we had to walk 10 miles in the snow with no shoes. You know what I mean? They would always one up you on everything. We had to build the school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We didn't even have school. We didn't, there was no such thing as schools. We just built schools and then we invented school like you know so you know how it is but they um yeah they were just kind of like that old and like you know whatever but they were they were cool in the sense of like they kind of gave me some stability because i came from a very inst in unstable home but um i always appreciated that but yeah i just i never had that foundation of like having parents that wanted to you know support or whatever so so bmx was like that was like the next best thing. And that was the thing that was tangible. So I would just, you know, I could go, like I could work summer jobs and then I could buy, you know, BMX bike. I could yeah. buy whatever I needed. And then I could also pay for races. So it was just easier. Yeah. It's a lower motor- entry fee to get in versus yeah. a whole yeah. motorcycle and then boots and whatever. You yeah. could have a pair of bands and a bicycle and fucking yeah. going around. Yeah. 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 But dude, I'll tell you, man, like, um, that was like, honestly, it was a lifesaver for me because I'll never forget. I'll always give this guy the the most credit in the world. John Cavacci, who, um, passed away, I think like 2011 or something like that. But John Cavacci, when I, when I was coming up and racing BMX and all that stuff, like he had a, a BMX team. He was a wheel builder. He built custom wheels mm. and he was pretty big, like within the BMX community and even in mountain biking at that time. So he would build, you know, custom wheels and stuff. And he was super busy. He also had a bike shop, but, um, dude, that guy to this day, dude, it only it like brings tears to my eyes when I think about it. I try not to cry about this, but like he really like, um, gave me an opportunity and it wasn't like that he was just like oh my god this guy's so talented it wasn't anything like that it was just like he just he just saw probably because i mean he was like 10 years older than me and he just saw that like yeah this kid's got a you know comes from a shit home like i just give this guy an opportunity like he would take me on the road and he put me on the team um i would make my mains but i was never like a top you know, I wasn't like a podium guy. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was always just skinny and so like, I never, tra- I never trained. Yeah. So he, he would take me on the road and, uh, man, it was just awesome. I had some of the best experience of my life, um, being on the road with, with that team and just racing in general, just, and we would just do, man, we just so much crazy shit. Like, and it was, it was awesome because, you know, for me, I was like a juvenile delinquent kid. Like I was vandalizing houses. I was getting in fights all the time. I was just like a shithead. I was a fucking yeah. shit. So for him to do that and like bring me out on the road and like knowing I was probably kind of a liability, but, but like he just, he was cool. And he, and he didn't do that just for me, he did it for other people too. So I think like, you know, it's like, I'll, I'll meet people that want to ride moto or mountain bikes or whatever. 
and maybe they don't have a lot of money. Cause there's a few kids I know like that. And I'm just like, man, I want to, I just want to get, I want to be in a position where I can just like finance a way for them to like, you know, be able have, to a, have a good trajectory. You know yeah. what I mean? You know, I th- I'm sure he could tell man, maybe he was a similar type of kid, but I'm sure you could tell that you really loved the whole team and riding and you wouldn't jeopardize that, you know, like, whereas you said, you said that you're, you know, a troubled kid at home, but you're so into BMX, you're not going to be that way to him or to his equipment or anything like that, or even at races because you're pumped to be at races, you know, and I actually had somebody from Georgia who was in prison for like five years ride for me he was the best fucking person i I ever had because it didn't matter what the scenario was he was pumped to be there he's like this is awesome (laughs) he was in prison in georgia he said he got thrown in the hole in this middle of summer he said it was just a concrete room and he's like i was just butt naked in the middle laid on the floor because it was the coolest i could get (laughs) and that guy like i said you said jump through that fire he'd been like fuck all right (laughs) well it's true man because like i mean i learned from my dad at an early age like my dad was in and out juvenile and um they beat the shit out of him it was back in the 60s and they would beat the fuck out of him and then I remember one time he told me a story where they brought him to um, County Services Road in Cobb County, and the cops that beat the fuck out of him, um, they didn't realize they beat the fuck out of a juvenile. Mm. So they brought him to County Services and they brought him in, and I guess like the um, the people in the office, you know, when they were like doing the whole processing or whatever, yeah. they were like, "Oh, you got <laughs> that's Pee Wee Harris," which was my dad's street name at the time. Uh, Cause my dad was a total fucking thug and like they, and he just had the shit beat out of him. And then it was funny because like he told a story about how they, the, whoever was behind the desk was, was like, yeah, y'all just beat the shit out of a, a minor. <laughs> <laughs> and so like the cops were all fucking freaked out. Cause they're like, they just beat the fuck out of a minor, but they didn't think he was a minor, I guess for whatever reason. But I kind of learned at an early age, like, my dad always taught me, like, he taught me a lot of shit about how to stay out of trouble, how to not go to jail, how to, like, you know, avoid a lot of that stuff. And so I did a lot, I did a lot of bad shit, but I was smart enough to not go to jail. Like, I had a few close calls. Um, but I was also never, like, a big you know i've never been a big dude like i'm not like a big intimidating guy either like when you're my size you have to really you got to really fucking strategize shit you got to think about things you know you got to be very calculated with stuff so i kind of learned a lot of that from him because my dad was never a big dude either you do get away with saying stuff sometimes because I'm, like, just big enough that people want to punch me in the face as soon as I say anything. I'm like, I haven't been punched in the face. I've been punched in the face a billion times. I don't act like I haven't been punched in the face. So many times. There's, and oddly enough, it's always been comedy-related. Like, or at least really? in, my adulthood. in my adulthood, yes. It's, it's mostly been comedy-related. Like comics or fans? No, I mean I've had a couple of comics test me, but like the like those weren't really that big of a deal. Well, I guess I mean, they weren't I, fans. No, but, uh, it's just like I I didn't like they tried. I like I did almost go to jail a couple of times, um, and you know, luckily because the staff and the people that worked at the place at the venue I was at. I didn't have that, you know, I didn't have to go to jail. Um, however, I have been in situations though, like, I mean, dude, I, I was in North Dakota once I had a, on an Indian reservation mm-hmm. and bro, I had a Vietnam vet, like, and on an Indian reservation, you can't fuck around. Yeah, they will fuck they them. Got their own they'll, they'll, police they'll, they'll, and everything. It's oh, a different country. They got their own fucking laws and everything. Uh, but yeah, dude, I had a, I had a, I had a guy like, uh, yeah, I mean, 
all the people in the audience were genuinely concerned for my fucking safety and well being. <laughs> that was a close call. I had another. I had another time in um, Durango, Colorado. I had another instance in uh, Bike Week at Myrtle Beach. Oh, that's where, easy to get into instances. <laughs> yeah, and it week. was another, it was another military guy. Like he busted a bottle, walked up on stage, and he was like literally about to just slice me with this fucking busted bottle. And and I'm just like, you know, I'm not a big guy and I but I also have a bad temper. So I'm like, you know, I, I'm not to say I like I'm not a trained fighter. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I, I'm the kind of guy like I can hit you really hard. I can hit I can punch fast. I can hit hard. But if I don't fucking knock you out or knock you dizzy and get another two or three licks in before, I'm fucked. Like, I'll be the first to say, like, <laughs> if anybody, like, if anybody actually knows how to fight and they get me on the ground, I'm pretty much fucked, yeah. which I know that. But so the dude walks up on stage, <laughs> like, and you know how it is, like, you're just, it's that same adrenaline you have when you're riding. It's like, if there's a jump that you're like, fuck that jump. I'm not this jumps bitch. Like I'm going to fucking conquer this. Shut off and go. Yeah. I'm going to fucking do it. And I'm going to go to bed tonight. I'm going to fucking sleep like a goddamn baby. Cause I fucking, I mastered this shit. That's how it just kicks in. Even, even, you know, like you might be out of your element, but you're just like, you're like, fuck, especially if people are watching. Cause you're like, you know, it's, it's it, I equate it to this. It's, this is so similar. It's like if you have, and because I've done this so many times, and I'm I'm awful at, at this. I'll build big ass jumps, and then I'll literally try to get other people to jump them because, like, I just want to see other people like go through that that whole thing of like that whole mind fuck, you know, yeah. of like like I know they can do it, but I know they know they can't, or I know that they don't think they can do it, but I know they can do it. Yeah. So like you can, like talk shit, and you're like just fucking do it you you want to go home and lay lay in bed tonight knowing you didn't fucking do this job you little bitch (laughs) so it's like that kind of thing kicks in and um yeah i don't know like it's um it's it's stupid i don't know it's dumb but we we do dumb stuff like that that's a good uh point about um action sports people and I was thinking about this the other day with you know like riders like <clears throat> especially high level riders you can't talk shit to them about anything especially about riding because they're just like do it yeah right now go ahead and do it you know we I were know. in California one time and I had somebody with me that had never flipped and <laughs> these people some guys were jumping into the pit and he kept giving them you know tips and I'm like it was me and Javier and we're like, have you ever flipped? And he's like, no. And we're like, well, there's a pit right there. And he's like, well, uh, uh, and we're like, well, no, you've been talking, telling people how to flip for the last fucking three hours. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, well, that's the key. Like you have to have done the jump yourself before you can talk shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's, <the thing. laughs> that's why I, I, I have built a lot of stuff and then had, and then p- other people have jumped it. But I like, I don't like to watch them struggle. I like to follow them off it so I know how fast to go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, go ahead, you can jump that. I'll just fo- see how you do it. See, dude, the uh, fact that, like, <laughs> I'll, I'll just say it right now, like, anybody flipping a motocross bike to me is just so, like, I can't even in my mind, I can't even picture that. It's one of those things, like, even on a BMX bike, like, I've never flipped a BMX bike. Because I don't even know that I've ever confidently flipped into a fucking swimming pool. Um, you know what I mean? Like, as a kid. Like, it's yeah. like, I don't even, I can't, like, one thing I've learned is, like, if you can't visualize yourself doing something, you don't need to be doing it. It's hard, yeah. 100%. That's, like, like red flag number one. If I you agree. can't picture yourself doing it, don't do it. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Um I would say, though, the flip thing is just a incremental thing, you know, because I didn't think I would do it either. And it's like really? I could do some backflips on trampolines and stuff, but, like, was I the ultimate, you know, I couldn't, yeah. you know, like, 
gator, whatever it is, gainer or any of that shit. Yeah. So, yeah. and I even started just like on the edge of a foam pit or a pool and you put your head like over the side and then you roll your legs yeah. over you. And that's literally how I started and then just, uh, you know, learned on bicycles and shit. But dude, I mean, dude, all like so much respect because I still to this day, I can't, I just can't get my mind. I just can't. And I'm, I mean, I know some people will say, oh, it's, it's, y'all make it seem so easy. I've never, never been able to do that. <laughs> and I'm not trying. Not at this point. No. <laughs> That's it. I'm going to get you to a foam pit and make you do it. Hell no. I've never <laughs> even jumped into a foam pit, so I don't even know what They're that's not, like. well, bicycles aren't bad, but on a dirt bike, they're not fun at all. Everybody's like, I'll try this shit in the foam pit. And I'm like, bro, jump into that thing once at 75 feet. And just <laughs> land and be like, ah, and then tell me how confident you are to try to fucking do whatever it is you want to try. Seems gnarly. Like, even in a foam pit, that seems very gnarly to me. Well, I think now the airbag landings, that's yeah. like, I would have flipped way faster if we had airbag landings. Because it was like the jump from foam to regular landing was just like, in my head, it was like a gigantic step if we had had that which now it's not an intermediate you know that's like what pe people are riding but if you had had that as the next thing to go to at least in my mind i could visualize it being soft <laughs> you know what i actually did the first time i flipped at the um did you ever see my riding spot or were you... i think i saw some so i think joey a mutual friend of ours like um i want to say he showed me some video um it was either, some, yeah, I think it was some video he had. I don't know if it's on his phone or what. I don't know. This has been so long ago, but like, I knew you flipped though, and I was just like, I like, I was blown away because I was like, "Holy fuck!" Like this dude flips. <laughs> like it's, it's such a big deal because because back then it wasn't like there was a shit ton of people yeah, flipping. No, like you were like within the first like, probably. Like, yeah, it was probably within the first forty people. That's crazy. I mean, that's crazy. 40 or 50, maybe. That's crazy. Um, so what my point was, what I was going to say, is that there was a horse barn there, and they used to have shavings that would, they would put in the stalls, and the horses would piss and shit in it, and they would yeah. shovel it and take it out. So I lined my whole landing with that because I was, was trying to make it soft. <laughs> <laughs> well, it probably was good, though. Like that's, I mean, I used to shovel horse shit all the time when I was a little kid, little little kid. Yeah, I had like a Smell eight bad, inches of cool. sawdust on the, you know, piss yeah, and yeah. shit laid in sawdust, but it was still <laughs> nice. <laughs> My third one, I pulled so quick, that's... I literally landed ninety degrees on the landing and just slid down the thing. I was like, "What the hell?" Damn, dude, I'm dude, I'm always like, you'll have mad respect for me forever because like. That is so gnarly, man. It's so gnarly. It's it's just horse shit or not. It's fucking gnarly. <laughs> so now, speaking of uh, bicycles, you or bikes, you now have Jared's place, which is a yeah. mountain biking park in yep. Georgia. Yeah. Um. Hold on, I got another. Well, you're not going to be able to see it, but I got another little thing pulled up where we can see your Instagram there. Okay. Um, so when did you start Jared's place? What's the deal on it? Yeah. So like, uh, 2012 is really kind of when I started. Like, um, I bought some land. I bought some land. Look, it's a whole backstory of like, which we won't get into, but like, um, I left Los Angeles, came back to, uh, Georgia and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna take a break, uh, from comedy. And so I bought like, um, it's like nine acres or something and, um, just started kind of building jumps and stuff in the woods. And I was kind of building by myself and just honestly, it was like more, more um, I just spent a time, I was going through a thing, man. I was like going crazy, I think. So I was spending a shit ton of time just in the woods and I would just build and I would like. I don't know. I didn't know what I was thinking. I didn't really have a direction or a trajectory for this. I just was building. I was like, well, I'm just going to build these things and I can ride 
And then hopefully like maybe some friends will come ride. And so that kind of started in 2012 and um, slowly kind of people started finding out about the place. And then I would have like a handful of people that would want to come ride and like hit jumps and all that stuff and do that type of riding. And honestly, it just kind of built from like 2012 up until now. I just was building and then I'd have people come ride and then I would try to get them to help build. And then some of them would help build and, you know, it just kind of blossomed into a thing. And then eventually like I sold the first property, uh, tried to find a better property and then I bought another property. And then that one was like a little more hilly and, you know, a little more possibilities and, um, yeah, we just kept riding, and then eventually I was like, all right, well, shit, I got all these people that want to come ride. Well, I, I just started saying, hey, y'all, if you want to come ride, donate, like, 15 or 20 bucks, and you come ride, or you can shovel, like, right. whatever, you know, whatever, whatever you want to do, because I was like, some people don't have money, so so I was like, you either come dig for a certain number of hours, or you, you know, donate 15, 20 bucks, and so that just kept getting more and more popular and then at some point i was like shit dude i need to find like a place because i feel like there's a market to build a bike park and so then i started hunting for land for a bike park and and then a buddy of mine which wasn't my buddy at the time he i just met him um josh who's my partner now he came out and he was just one of the dudes that hit me up i was like hey i want to come ride I was like, yeah, and I came, gave him the whole spill, and he was like, literally having to do like a a waiver on his phone, like basically saying the shit that I told him to say, like you know, if I die or get right. injured, seriously, injured, you're not responsible. Like, I literally, just I don't know if any of this had any legal right. <laughs> bearings at all on anything, but like, I would just get these people to do this stuff, and so he came, he was riding a bunch, and then next thing you know, like. um we were talking and uh, he was wanting to open up a bike shop and I was wanting to open up a bike park. And I was like, man, you know, these two basically would feed each other. So we'll just try to figure out how to do it ourselves. And we had an, a potential investor at the time, or I had a potential investor. And um, the more we got to talking and realizing like, well, shit, we had like, he had just, just enough money. And I had just enough money to like, if we put it together, we could make it, work so that's kind of how the whole bike park came to be so we just put it put our shit together and dude it's been it's been great i mean it's been a little stressful or whatever it's been a lot of hard work but it's been awesome yeah did you have to wrestle over whose place it was no no not really like i mean kind of i think always from the get-go because like the whole name jared's place was never it, it kind of just developed organically it was like one of those things that was just like everybody's like I never going had a to name. ride at jared's place yeah like i never had a name for the place but everybody just called it jared's place and so i remember this particular day i was on like instagram or something and i was like i was like well it only makes sense to just call it jared's place because everybody's called it you know like that's yeah. just whatever it so i just started naming it jared's place on instagram and then from that i mean it just it's just like a trickle effect and i also felt kind of conscientious about naming it jared's place like when we opened up the new bike park but i was talking to a buddy of mine it's like into you know he's like really good at branding and all that stuff and he's like and i, I remember I'm, i i sent him a message i sent him a text i was like hey man I just feel real weird about naming this place Jared's Place. <laughs> and he was like, you're a fucking idiot if you don't. Like, that's literally what everybody already knows. Yeah. Like, why would you change everything? And I was like, I was like, yeah, 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 you're right. So, but, it, you know, even though I kind of felt weird about it at first, like, now seeing everybody that comes to the park and all that stuff, it's like, and... Anybody who knows me knows I don't I don't want any sort of corporate vibe at all. Like I'm very anti corporate. Yeah. And I always want it to feel like it's like more personal and like a more 
organic and more like um just buddies riding kind of exactly like family you know because i mean my whole family's dead so like for my like this sounds kind of sad to say but like dude that is my family yeah like people that come out and ride and the people i see on a day-to-day basis or a weekly basis dude that's my family like my crew the people that work there uh my business partner, Josh, like he's a friend, like not only is he a business partner, he's a friend, you know what I'm saying? Like they're all like my whole crew. I'll, I consider them all friends. So for me, it's like, it's almost like my surrogate family. So it's just, it's, it's like a more, yeah, I don't know. I would it's agree. Not, I mean, I'm more um, connected to the people that I rode and traveled with than I am with, anybody I went to school with for the most part, there's like two people I went to high school with, you know, that I talked to, but I'll still keep in contact with freestyle friends or moto friends a little more. And they're all over the country, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You have that bond besides, you know, like you guys are around each other, but uh, the basis of your relationship is both, both loving, you know, something. Absolutely. And I feel like, too, like, whenever there's, you know, disagreements or whatever, like, I feel like that bond and that uh, that friendship or that family, that camaraderie, that always kind of transcends those things, you know, uh, because, you know, I don't necessarily I don't I don't prescribe to that whole ideology of like blood's thicker than water. Like, I mean. You know, there's a lot of people I'm related to. I don't give a fuck about it. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just it's because, not because you're I, related I, doesn't I, mean you have anything in common other than that. Yeah, exactly. But there's people that I've connected with, like, um, that have done way more for me. Um, you know, in terms of friendships or whatnot. Like, they've done way, for, way more for me than people that I'm blood related to. Yeah. So, you know, when I say, when I say, and I don't, I don't easily like make close connections. Like I'm not just, I'm not an easy person to get to know kind of guarded and uh, have a, uh, a wall built up. But, um, you know, when I am somebody's friends, like, dude, I'm like, I'm your, like, I'm fucking loyal as shit. (laughs) That's, that is, that is one thing that I'm good at. Uh, amidst all my other faults like that is one thing that i'm kind of proud of myself <laughs> well because you realize where that stuff is coming from to you as well you know yeah 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 and just having respect for um the process whether it be respect for the process and in, in, within comedy or respect for the process in like riding uh, because it takes fucking balls. It takes balls to go flip a fucking motocross bike. It takes balls to go, you know, there's, I mean, just riding in general, racing, like competing, like it, it takes balls. And I have a lot of respect for people that, um, go out and take chances in general. You know, that to me, that's like, that's huge. That's awesome. That's, yeah. uh, it, tell, it says a lot about a person's character when they're willing to put all all of it on the line to achieve a thing. You know, I, I don't know. I just have I've always had a lot of respect for that. It's a mental disorder, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, just been trying to figure out if I'm tough or dumb, and. Dude, I think, I mean, I, honestly, some of the smartest people I know are dumb. Look at, look, look at Travis Pastrana. Now I'm just throwing it. I know a lot of people are throwing his name out for, you know, a lot, but like that motherfucker's smart. Yeah. He's Brian Deegan. Uh, some people will call him a fucking, you know, whatever. It's very calculated. Yeah, very, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, Travis, the same with all, I mean, honestly, all the pro motocross riders I know, dude, they're all fucking, like, most of them I know are 
when I say most that I know, like I know, you know, the the a lot of the top guys. You you probably know more guys that maybe because you you've been more in the scene more so than I have. Um, that didn't make it quite so far. Yeah, yeah, but but the ones I know of that have made it, and even the ones I know that didn't, you know, make it mainstream per se. Like to me, they still have tons of respect. I have tons of respect for them because they all seem to like. They all know they fucking take care of their shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if they got a family, they're fucking providing. You know, it's like they all they all take care of their shit. And um, I don't know, man. It's there's something like I think to be at that level to even race like a pro national. Uh, motocross race or a fucking supercross to make a main at supercross oh. you're not only are you fucking insane you're in the top top percentile of like athleticism in the in the world you're the top of, of the cream of the crop in, in terms of uh, athleticism but you also have to have that business side and dude I don't know, man. Like most everybody I've seen, they're killing. In my perspective, they're killing it. You know, I'm sure some of them don't feel that way. <laughs> but, I think um, anybody does. I don't think, it, I don't think we're ever satisfied. Yeah, exactly. You know, I've always had a saying for a long time, where I'm like, if I can do it, it's easy. You know, so it's like you always like discredit something you can do so like like just straight flipping like i could do like a couple of things right but so then if somebody can straight flip i'm just like ah oh. but then then if they start doing things i couldn't do like super flips blah 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 then you're like oh that's hard you know but it's like you always discredit whatever you can do because you're like i can do that so it must not be that crazy yeah yeah, yeah. Rosa. A lot of these younger um, riders aren't as impressed with like their 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 old school, you know. Their, uh, I don't know. It's weird. This is one thing, and this could just could could just be me and my perception of of things. But like, I kind of feel like a lot of younger guys, girls, guys and girls, um, they's and them, they's them's. Where the fuck? I don't know what the fuck's acceptable now, but uh. But anyway, like it, you know, whoever it is, they're looking at like some of these older people, and it's almost like I, I feel like they're almost kind of unimpressed with <laughs> like, like you take somebody like Jet Lawrence, for instance. Um, you know, it's like I wonder what they think of somebody like fucking, you know. David Bailey or Johnny O'Mara. Like, I wonder if they look at them and they're like impressed or if they're just like, ah, oh, they're not even scrubbing. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, I, that's, I, I was, I you're right. Cause I was thinking freestyle more, more so than racing because, or, or any type of sport like that, like, um, Tony Hawk doing the 900, right? And now there's like 11 year olds doing 900. So it's like, did those 11 year olds even give a shit about Tony know. Hawk? <laughs> It's like, uh, so? Like, what is this old dude? I don't care about Look, why is everybody freaking out? He landed in I did that when I was not. <laughs> so, so it's just, it's weird, but like, it's, I guess, it's just the element. But I mean, I feel like, you know, you should always have respect for the foundation that was laid. Well, with this type of stuff uh, and everything, but, you know, this type of stuff, especially sports in general, like, Knowledge compounds, right? Whereas you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have had, um, whatever, Axel Hodges if you didn't have Mike Sinkmars. Yeah. You know, like, and boxing, all that stuff. People figure techniques out, and then that gets taught to people, and then that becomes the standard thing. But at one point, that was just one person that figured it out on their own. You know, and yeah. they revolutionized the game or the sport or whatever it is. You know, just like you said about the scrub. 
Jeremy started like carving a little bit. I would say he's the first person that started to break like the straight plane off of jumps because he started staying yeah. way lower. Then James came out, and then all of a sudden he took it to yeah. another level. Like a know? hole. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it is and funny. Ricky, Ricky too. Yeah, Ricky didn't even do anything with he. Ricky fucked the whole industry by making them train like maniacs. That's what he did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's good. but you know, like, but I think I I think like guys like Ward, O'Mara. Um, I don't think they get is uh, I don't think they get enough respect for the training part. Yeah. Like I feel like it's kind of overlooked now because it's been so long ago. But those guys were fucking they were really ahead of their time in terms of training. Yeah. You know, they were fucking killing it in terms of conditioning and training and such. So um and it's easy to overlook that because of, you know, they're older generation or whatnot, but like I look at like somebody like O'Mara now. Or Ward now, and I'm just like, dude, that guy would kick my fucking ass. Dude, they're on any uh, sort of like, if if I went on a mountain bike ride, like, yeah, they would kick kill me on a mountain bike. Wardy's ride. doing like four hour rides regularly. It's, it's, like, it's insane. <laughs> it's insane. But and that and that doesn't take anything away from like the guys like you know uh, Lachine or like the guys that I just just had that raw talent that yeah. you're just like. Well, no, that's, that's the thing there, though, it, is that you'll never have a Lachine now. Like, just somebody that's just oh, so wow. talented that they don't they can slack. Because it's like, even the talented Harsh. guys, like Jet, are working their ass off. So if you have the guy with the talent of Lachine also working his ass off, you're in trouble. <laughs> so... My wife just brought me uh, a little sparkling lime. Thank you, babe. What? Appreciate you. You didn't have to stop because I did it. A little treat. I don't know. Yeah, she was trying to be sly. I, I was trying to be sly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you did a good job. Jared ruined it. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> That's my wife. Twice. Another funny, very funny, talented comedian. Excellent. In her own right, does her own thing. Yeah. yeah. All right, get out here. I'm doing podcast. Fly to Vegas in two days. Get, get. Go on, get. Doing her thing. I get rid of them. Get. <laughs> Go on, <Okay>. get. <laughs> I learned Dude, that I'm, in Georgia. I'm, I just love talking to Moto. Like, honestly, like, to be, just to be on your show, like, just, I don't know. I, I fucking love it. Dude. I I could talk moto all day long or BMX. I mean, honestly, moto. I'm I'm the biggest fan of moto more than anything. More than anything, like it's just um, I don't know, dude. I just every day. It's like, and that's what Instagram is now. It's like Instagram is like this fucking. It's like every day, every morning on Instagram when I get on Instagram, it's like literally, it's like being a kid again and going into the convenience store and buying fucking dirt bike and motocross action magazine, like and flipping through the pages and you're just, everything's just amazing. Yeah. And not only that, but you see video and you see shit that happened right that day. And you get to minute. see stuff from your favorite riders, like at practice or whatever, which is, was never a thing before that. It's, it's crazy. Cause like, at that time, like I never thought, of, I never even thought that there would be. It's just so crazy to think that at that time, I just assumed, yeah, thirty years from now, there'll just be magazines that'll still be shit'll just be coming out a month later. Like I never yeah. <laughs> ever could even process like, oh, there's gonna be social media and and every writer that you have is gonna have their own following and literally empire within that you know following yeah that they can post i mean deegan's kid like it's unbelievable like yeah well they his whole life is chronicled already yeah 
And I fucking jerk off at any fucking picture I find of me from when I was a kid. Like, I have so few. You know, I'm just like, holy shit. Like, almost is amazing. Here's a blurry-ass photo of me (laughs) riding some shitty motocross track in Alabama. (laughs) You know, like, and I'm all stoked about it. These kids are spoiled. Yeah. They're going to have too much, though. They got too much. Too much stuff. You're going to look back and go, ah. Yeah. Look at my hair. I know. I got to start taking some shit away. No. Look how it talked. <laughs> oh, my God. This is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you guys uh, have a ride day after Supercross at yeah. the bike park. Yeah, we do. I'll actually yeah. s- pull that up for everybody because I saw a flyer for it. There it is. Yeah, April 16th. April 16th, so if you guys go to, how far are you from, well, it's not at the stadium, it's at uh, Speedway. Yeah, so the race, um, Atlanta's been, Atlanta Supercross has been at uh, Atlanta Motor Speedway. Is that right? Is it Atlanta Motor Speedway? I think, um, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's Atlanta Motor Speedway. But anyway, it's been at Atlanta Motor Speedway for the past couple of years. This will be the third year. That many? And yeah, it's been three. Yeah. Yeah, this will be the third. Did they have one in the Benz Dome in the new stadium? They used, no? Yeah, they used to do the Mercedes Benz. Um, but but that's what I'm saying. Did they do the new stadium? Because it was the Georgia Dome. Then they built the Mercedes Benz Stadium. Did they ever do one in there? Is that when they went to? Yeah. They did do, like, I know I've been to one at Mercedes. Okay. Uh, but, I mean, I'll be honest with you, like, I'm not a fan of the I'm not a fan of that. And the reason being is because um Atlanta Motor Speedway, it's so easy, man. You just you pull up and within like, I don't know, fucking five minutes, ten minutes, you're 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 through the gate. You're you're already going to your seats. And the other thing I love about that place is that um the way that the track is, it's laid out kind of like Daytona is. Yeah kind of a nice mixture it's like a mix of like i mean there's always like a sand section it's like it's a little higher speed jumps are bigger it's got more of an outdoorsy feel to yeah. it well you know it's just i don't i love it dude but i still got that lot. red clay son there's a little bit of yeah so it's a mix of the red clay and the sand and all that but um uh yeah i just don't like from a spectator viewpoint like I feel like the venue that it's been at has been the best. Um, and I hope it stays there. Like I know it's there this year, but hopefully it'll be next year too. What I'm hearing, or I just heard rumors of this. I don't know if it's true, but apparently like the, the, the Ben stadium, they got an issue with people bringing dirt in there. That's what I figured it probably was. So I don't know. Like we'll see if it continues to be at the 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 uh, you know the out the outdoor Atlanta Motor Speedway. The only problem, I, was, I guess, it's not a problem. But if it rains, but well, it was Fulton County Stadium. It was still a stadium, but that was an open air stadium, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I mean, there's some classic classic races. Best race I ever saw was, and you might know. 89 or no, 90? 90. 90. Fulton, okay. County, Fulton County Stadium. Yeah. Uh, 1990 Supercross. There was yeah. like 12 liters. We, I know. That's insane. I remember. I remember. <laughs> we thought that Guy Cooper was finally going to get that elusive victory, yeah. and he pulled a Chase Sexton or Aaron Plessinger and just yeah. wadded himself up all by himself. And guess who won who we were talking about? Jeff Ward. Was it? Yeah, it was Ward. Was it? Was that ninety or ninety one? That was I'm ninety. Getting... Was, um, okay. Because Rick Johnson was in, he led for a little bit. Uh, dude, it was like. So what was it? Was it eighty nine? Was that Damon Bradshaw's rookie year? I feel like that was his rookie year. Uh, no, ninety was his rookie year. Was it ninety? Okay, yeah. so that is the same year that I'm thinking. Yeah. Of. Because and the reason I say this is because a local boy. Sean Dukes got the whole shot. And if I need to go back and watch that now. Yeah, Sean Dukes on a Honda, 
on CR 125. Uh, I think his number is 426. Don't hold me to that, but I'm pretty sure it's 426. He got the fucking whole shot. Sean Dukes. And I remember there was like, um, if it's the same year I'm thinking of, you had this kind of sweeping right-hander out of the first turn, and then there was just like this big double. And this big double, you land, and then you immediately go into these this long section of whoops. Uh-huh. And that was either 89 or 90. But I remember Sean Dukes got the whole shot, and I was like, I was just, I was just like, oh my god! Because I remember I met Sean Dukes one time riding at this little um, place that our buddy um, Joey Casey. Um, there's this little place off Thornton Road in Douglasville, Georgia, and I would go out there and ride. And it was just like this little practice track, and it was nothing built. You know, it's not, it's not like nowadays where he's like literally right. somebody's whole fucking supercross track. It was like, you know, just some mounds of dirt and that's literally where he would go practice <laughs> to train for supercross yeah, yeah dude and um, it was just cool so i just was i was amazed so his he, dad when i was in georgia his dad would do my suspension lsd yeah, yeah larry dukes yep lsd dukes. i don't know what the s stand for larry yeah sean dukes that. i don't know <laughs> larry yeah. dukes suspension Wait. Maybe, but why was it LSD? I don't know, man. Probably just their marketing, just like playing on the or something. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so he's a, he's a local legend down there. His dad uh, did suspension yeah. for years. Yeah. This all ties in with all the whole rest of the crew. Joey Casey worked for Kevin Kelly, who does DMXS. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they owned Bremen Raceway. Yeah. yeah. And, um, uh, I lost Kevin's brother's name. First Kyle. Name. Kyle. Kyle uh, Race, yeah. Was and also Ken, real fast, yeah. Yeah, Ken was the oldest. Ken was kind of out of racing, which I think Ken was, like, a really good rider, too, when he raced. But, like, but, yeah, Kevin's, um, Kevin's younger brother, Kyle, he was, could rip on a motocross bike. And I think Kyle still rides and everything. Kyle's actually, I just found out he's coming to our charity ride day, April 16th, day after Supercross. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he's coming out, which would be cool as I haven't seen him in years. But, um, yeah, there's just a lot of... Didn't you have a big announcement, a big name? Yeah, so we, we've got a couple of, like, um, verbal confirmations. Like, I know Josh Hill said he was going to come to our charity ride day. This is our first, our first year of doing this. Um, it's a charity ride day where, uh, the proceeds are going to go to the, uh, wings. It's, it's Red Bulls wing wings for life. And it's basically like a spinal cord, uh, found research foundation. So, um, it's a good cause. Um, and you know, selfishly it's more like, I just wanted to put something together cause I'm just a huge moto fan. So, any reason <laughs> I can get like to get yeah. people moto people to come out and ride is amazing. But, um, but like I said, it goes to a really good cause. Um, Josh Hill has done a, a verbal. Uh, I just found out Aaron Plessinger did a verbal to come out. So yeah, man. I mean, and I'm sure like once we get closer to the actual race, I'm sure people will talk more and, you know, and it'll be like, oh, I'm going to do this thing or whatever. So I imagine we'll probably get a few more good, you know, good names to come out. But, um, yeah, dude, I'm just, I'm excited because I feel like mountain biking and moto, they kind of go hand in hand. I mean, a lot of people that ride moto ride mountain bikes. Even just to train. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And we're hooking them all up. Like, so anybody, any of these guys that come out, I mean, you know, we've got, I mean, we're ready to roll, dude. We've got, like, bikes for them. we got helmets, pads, whatever the, whatever the fuck they need. They're, awesome. they're, uh, they're, yeah, they're taken care of. Um, we're literally rolling out the red carpet for them. Uh, Mountain Motorsports is um, helped with kind of facilitating some of this stuff, too. Kevin Kelly huge thanks uh to kevin kelly because um kevin's really you know he's been around forever i mean the fact that kevin kelly 
uh, David Iser uh, with DMXS. Dude, they were doing, and even Joey, because Joe was part of that yeah. whole mix too at the beginning. And even I was a little bit because I would I would do a character on that show. Um, but, you know, they were putting out these a, a podcast essentially yeah. in the nineties. Yeah. Before With, there was ever a fucking podcast. Dude, and it was like, like money just for him to send it through the airwaves there. Because I remember talking about it, and he's like, bro, crazy. we've got like this crazy server we got to use. I'll, I'll do all That's this it. shit. Dude, it was crazy. And they would do every single week, man. I remember they would have like, I remember, I remember like just like uh, clowning on like, all these big writers, it's not like Rick Johnson, like, I mean, all these people, I would just clown on them, right? They, like, all these people would come up on, and I would, <laughs> I would do my little character. Uh, this is a little character called Dan the Hickier Man, and I would just, you know, I would just talk a bunch of shit or whatever, and it was just all silly, but, like, these guys would come on this, this internet, like, back then it was an internet radio yeah. show, because there was no such thing as a podcast. And it was just so cool to think that, like, these guys that I've known for so long, they they literally pioneered this whole thing before it was a thing. Yeah, they're so modest about it now too. Like if you say anything to them about it, they're just like, yeah, yeah. But in my mind, I'm like, dude, I'd be freaking flexing so hard about that yeah. because it's it's freaking cool as shit. Yeah, they were definitely doing it way before the trend. Yeah, <laughs> and kept it going, you know. That's, I was putting videos on uh, YouTube in 05, basically, when it came out. We started that's doing it. Super, that's a long time, dude. But that was, it wasn't on my channel. They are on Paul Smith's channel. If you go back and look at his channel, the original videos, we have 60,000, 70,000 views. And everybody, I've gone to Mexico. I've gone to South America. Yeah. And people knew who I was from all those videos. In my That's head, so we're just screwing around putting videos up. And then I, like yeah. I said, I went to Mexico, Mexico yeah. City, and this kid runs up and he just starts saying names. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like what You're is like, going what? on? And then he starts saying <laughs> phrases. And I'm like, what the hell is this kid saying? I realize they're all things that we said in the videos. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. He, like, doesn't speak English. He's just rattling off fucking things that he can say. <laughs> Yes. That's back when you were living, yes. you were living that time, yeah, and and so you would go, did you go to Mexico a lot back then? No, like, I went to Colombia like Columbia. 10, okay. 12 times. Okay, because I remember Joey telling me something about how you were going out of country to like, and doing shows and stuff. Yeah, I went to Colombia a bunch, I ended up doing some big like um, Suzuki promotional tour there. So we'd go back like every, I'd go like a couple of times a year to all these different cities. Were you riding a Suzuki? No. Okay. <laughs> I'd, <laughs> I'd even go down there and they'd get me, dude, they'd get me a Yamaha and I would ride a Yamaha and it was on the Suzuki promotional tour. Two stroke, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, Did you ever flip a four stroke? Yep. The last okay. year that I rode, um, I switched to a 450, and actually, I didn't, I said I was never going to flip one, and I didn't yeah. for the first however long, like probably 10 months or something, and then uh, these flip shows that I always did came up, and I just was like, ah, fuck it, and I committed to doing it. I had flipped twice on a 450 into a pit. Uh, the first one, was I... Weird or... Huh? huh? Was it weird? Because I remember, I don't know if they're different it's than they were better. back then, but I remember like early 2000s, like four strokes were really heavy throttle braking. Like it just oh, seemed, yeah. it was so different. But you just turn your um, idle up a little bit. You could actually control the way a 450 flew with your idle. Okay. You know, like if you revved your idle way up, it'd be like, or you could like leave it down and stay. But you could get it to like go flat. Problem is, once your idle was up, it was hard to stop because yeah. <laughs> wanted to like push itself. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but um, yeah. Last year, I told this not too long ago. I flipped it twice into a pit, over pulled the hell out of the first one. Second one was nose down. This was in October, and then I 
committed to flipping something at the end of January or the uh, there was six events six weeks in a row starting the end of January so I went whatever that is October November December January almost four months and then just ripped them the dirt out of the show Dude, that, I, I mean to me it seems like it would be almost feel like you're learning to backflip again all over again but no, i don't know <clears throat> not really it's actually honestly um they have their drawbacks you know like give and takes but overall 450s are fun to ride on ramps because like basically i'll tell this real quick uh the first time i rode a 450 at a show where it's a monster truck show dirt floor and then the mon where we turn to get onto the dirt the monster trucks are back and they're like parking and they're going on and off of the floor so the floor of dirt is kind of like breaking off onto the concrete polished concrete so now it's making all this dust so the fucking promoter goes over with a hose and wets down the dust on top of the polished concrete well if i was on a 250 i would have been in the corner clutching the shit out of it to not spin then when yeah. I got on the dirt, the dirt was like Play-Doh, basically. Because like yeah. whenever they bring the like super crosses, they're all like that. Because they brought the dirt straight in and built the thing. Well, you know, you work with dirt all the time. Yeah. Wet dirt is like basically Play-Doh. So th there was a rut. As soon as you got onto the dirt all the way to the ramp, it was pretty sticky. And <laughs> on a 252 stroke, I would have had to get onto the dirt and then clutch it again some more to get the motor to rev up. And I didn't do any of that on the 450. I was just like, so the torque, so the torque works in your favor. Yeah. Just like, you know, just roll it on. I've been yeah. on plenty of floors where people are going, we need to go back further. And I'm like, I cannot make it. And they're like, come on. And I'm like, dude, I'm sitting on my fender, you know, like they, we do these agricultural like arenas or whatever out West. Yeah. And yeah. instead of it being like real soft, normally they would just bring a, roller in wet the floors and then compact it with a roller but you roll you throttle well, across like that a sponge probably right no it was hard but the problem is oh, as soon well. as you ride it ac ride across it a couple of times now you've got all this dust or like gravelly uh, stuff on the top so now it's just like fucking ice again so yeah. we were at some place and i'm like i am having a hard time and they're like come on dude and i'm like go down to the corner and watch me come out of the corner and i go and i'm sitting on my back fender <laughs> and i would come out of the corner and just be like zzz, zzz, zzz. But who's saying come on dude though? the other just guys on 450s they're like just fucking we can go uh, further back and i'm like i cannot go any further i'm barely getting over it as it is and it's dude, just you, i mean you are like you're a pioneer of the the early days of uh, freestyle. Like, a little bit. That's pretty fucking cool. I appreciate that. As far yeah. as, especially as far as the ramp game, nobody was really, I had literally <laughs> like the third portable ramp set up, maybe in the world. As far as I knew, there was... Um, the music tour. What the hell is it? The, yeah, I know what you're talking about. The, um, shit. Dude, I know. It's a surprise. It's a punk music tour. <laughs> Warp yeah. tour. Warp tour, yeah. I and don't, they had a yeah. tiny wooden landing, which was, those dudes were nuts jumping to that I thing. I saw that. That looked <laughs> off. Dude, it's not like, look at that Didn't landing. Did Diamond or somebody get really fucked up on one of those? Um, like, like a, a hole or something was in it or something or carry hard or somebody somebody i think they went through it yeah dude that that looked fucking sketchy and then there was mark burnett had a um like a a flatbed truck that he had extended and then he put a deck over top of the cab there was mark, that. You know, mark barnett the fucking old school yeah no the, no, he, this guy did race, but he's not the Mark. Barnett. He's like Mark exactly. Burnett or something. Uh, <laughs> it's like some alternate reality. Like, no, no, man. I wasn't Mark Barnett. I was Mark Burnett. He's like, yeah, I raced. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he had a big, so Freestyle MTX tour or FreestyleMX.com is okay. Mark Burnett. 
Okay. So all those uh, shows and stuff were marked. So he had a ramp early on. Then I built mine. So as far as I know, I'm pretty sure I'm the third person to have a full portable ramp set. Definitely yeah. the first on the East Coast. That's the other thing I do remember, too, from that time. Um, <clears throat> what I remember... I remember Joey telling me about you having like your own setup and um I just thought that was like cool shit. I was like super intrigued by that. Yeah, man. Um and at the time I think when you were here I say here. Well yeah, because in, in Georgia. Um yeah, I was just like I was on the road all the time. I was yeah. all the time. You would pop up every once in a while and then that would Yeah, once in a while I would come I would come pop up but yeah um yeah it's crazy dude it's just man, man it makes me feel old oh i hate i hate thinking about it, like how long ago that was a long was. time ago jared does it seem like that long <laughs> sometimes it doesn't 20 it years ago fuck oh, dude damn it yeah i don't know man <laughs> like like an old dude <laughs> getting there all right, well, we're going to wrap it up because i got to go to sleep to go to work tomorrow. What time do you get up in the morning? Uh, I don't know. I try to get up at like 7.30-ish, but you know, some, sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. See, the fiancé yeah. gets up at like 4.15, so I... Um, really? Yeah, because she does yeah. uh, shipping or like... Um, Okay. like a warehouse so she like runs a bunch of brands and ships all their stuff out for him so she gets in there at like five o'clock to route all these orders and bullshit and get everything taken care of before people get there so i get up at like if i go back to sleep i'll sleep till like 6 30 <laughs> that's a good i'm like yeah dude i'm man yeah, that sounds rough. <laughs> <laughs> when I do comedy, I um, make sure I get comedy a nap in that day. I get a nap in that day, and then that way I can stay up until easily 11. Yeah, I've never been able to get a nap. Like, I just don't sleep. I don't sleep like that. But um, at night, I finally start taking some meds where I can actually go to sleep, which I'm not a big pharma guy at all, but, like, it was either that or, like, die so i was just like all right i gotta do something not die yeah <laughs> yeah all right well uh where can everybody catch you know see your stuff jared's place yeah so, so right now jared's place i mean and it's not gonna be comedy obviously um i haven't put i haven't done i, I actually just album. searched you and started looking at some bits before we got on and i was like or just like some stuff because i literally all to be old <laughs> very old stuff yeah but i like it's funny because when i knew you then i wasn't like into comedy and like i'm still not like a huge watcher of all things comedy and at this point, writing jokes, I try to not watch, like, that that much because I don't want to have yeah. other people's shit kind of, like, start creeping into mine. Yeah. Um, but it's... I feel the same way. Yeah. Otherwise, you inherently just start thinking in that pattern or something, and you'll, like, veer off of a bit, you know, that you never would have done before. Yeah. But it's funny just because <clears throat> I was never... I always thought it was really cool, and because jo same thing, Joey's like, "Oh, he's here. He's traveling there," and uh, you know, like you would show up every once in a while. And be like, oh, I just went, and I was always envious because, like, <clears throat> for me to do shows, I got to take a bike and a ramp, and I gotta, you know. And you're just like, "I'm just taking my bag, and I'm gonna yeah. just my brain's got all my stuff in it, and I'm just gonna." talk shit to people you know like i was like so much safer <laughs> yeah <laughs> not only is it safer but he doesn't even it's less expensive he can just it's he doesn't yeah less, <laughs> less expensive <too. laughs> he doesn't have to drag a motorcycle around this is great <laughs> um it's it is more i think it is safer um I'm the only one I know of all the comics I know that's made comedy dangerous. Uh, I, for whatever reason, I've gotten myself into way too many hairy situations, but like, it's not normal. It's, it's your adolescent you coming it. through. 
Yeah, dude. I don't know. I just go I back know. to your roots. Me, drinking. I just I don't know. Me drinking violence. It's, it's just never is a good thing because I always end up getting myself into way too much fucking shit. But you got too real for uh, them. Is what happened. I got a what? You got too real for them. I don't know, man. They're in the middle of the country, just worried about cows and meth, you know? And then here you come. Yeah, dude. I don't know. It's, it's, uh, yeah, it is what it is. But we're, we're all good. We're here. We're living. We're alive. And I'm, I'm doing good. I'm talking to you. <laughs> so everything's good. Everything's good. But, but, um, but yeah, so, Jared's place. Um, that's that's the bike park page, um, and then my personal page is just uh, Jared loves biscuits. Um, but but yeah, right now main focus is just trying to get the bike park. Just you know, uh, I don't know, putting everything into that, building trails, all that sort of thing. And then um, I w- I will be back at comedy again, but um, it's just taking me a little while to get to that point because there's just so much to do with this but i do miss i do miss it and um yeah um i'm i'm envious like with you right now just being able to get out and do some stuff and like get on stage and it feels good man it feels good to like just write shit down and go up on stage and do those things and iron them out i mean it's just a good feeling yes you no know it works and yeah, it's great. Then you put it in your holster. And yeah, you're like, I got this butthole joke. Always works. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But no, I applaud you, dude. Like doing backflips, doing jokes, taking chances. Man, it's like I don't know, man. I'm, I'm a yeah. I'm I'm just very supportive of all of that. Well, I love the park. I love you getting back to, you know, on a stage. I think I need to get down there, and we need to go. You do out need to get down. I was literally that's my next thing. Is like you got to come down here because if you come down here, I can like hook you up with. I know a shit ton of people and stuff, obviously, uh, in the business, but like Atlanta specifically, man, I can like hook you up with a bunch of shit. And then also, you you got a place to stay anytime. So. Anytime you come down here, just let me know. And right. um, also, I gotta get you on a mountain bike too, because we got we got bikes. Yeah, that would be dope. Helmet, <laughs> pads, everything. Let's go. All right, uh, yeah. we're getting out of here, everybody. Thanks for watching. Leave some comments and uh, whatever. That's it. Let us know. Hell yeah! Wrap. Right.